Week seven, day four. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and today, Thursday. There ought to be three goals. Have you responded to those three goals or have you reacted to those three goals? All the years that I ever coached, we taught this lesson every year. That, this is one of the, the guaranteed lessons that we were going to teach early in the year. And when a player would have a problem or a situation with a teacher, and I would say, John, what happened? He said, Coach, I reacted. I said, well, you got to respond. That's all that needed to be said. And we talked about what actually a reaction was and what a response was. If you fumble the football, tell me what a response is and tell me what a reaction is. Well, you see it all the time. You go to Little League baseball games and the kid strikes out and he throws the bat and throws the helmet. And his mother said, he is a really, he's a competitor. No, he ain't. He's a loser. Because he's getting rid of all his emotion by reacting to it, by throwing that helmet and throwing that uh, bat. If he were a competitor and he were going to respond, he would stay after practice and take extra batting practice so it didn't happen again. How do you respond to the bad things that happen to you? How do you respond to fumbling the football? How do you respond to your team not scoring a touchdown or the team missing a field goal? Or how do you, how do you respond to that? You know, one of the things about being a kicker or being a cornerback is a short memory. Well, it's good for all of us to have short memories. When something bad happens, we don't just sit around and whine about it. We respond to it. We make something good out of what happened. I talked about the first day getting fired at North Texas. I look back now, I'm 70 years old. It was probably the best thing that ever happened to me. Without... I take that back. It wasn't probably the best thing. It was simply the best thing. Because I got fired, I got to go to work for Zig Ziglar. Zig Ziglar convinced us, D.W. Rutledge and myself, to publish a curriculum for coaches to teach character education. And character education has been my emphasis since 19, well, since 1994, since I got fired writing a book and getting it to as many people as possible. So when you think about getting fired, and I promise you that day I was not excited about it, but I responded to it, and by doing so, it's made my life 10,000 times more fun, 10,000 times more uh, gaining things from teaching character to kids. It's made my life what it is. Today, the lesson, the story is flea trainer. This may surprise you, but you'll never have success. It's page 49, page 49, developingcharacter.org. You'll never have success until you learn to train fleas. You train fleas by putting them in a jar with a top on it. Fleas jump, so they'll jump up and hit the top over and over again. As you watch them jump and hit the top, you'll notice something interesting. The fleas continue to jump, but they're no longer jumping high enough to hit the top. Then, and it's a matter of record, it's been proven, you can take the top off, and though the fleas continue to jump, they won't jump out of the jar. They won't jump out because they can't. The reason is simple. They have conditioned themselves to jump just so high, and that's all they can do. Man is the same way. He starts out in life to write a book, climb a mountain, break a record, or make a contribution. Initially, his dreams and ambitions have no limits, but along the roadway of his life, he bumps his head and stubs his toe a few times. At this point, his friends and associates often make negative comments about life in general, and him in particular, and as a result, he becomes a sniop. A SNIOP is a person who is susceptible to the negative influences of other people. You begin believing what they say about you. Every third grader is going to play for the Dallas Cowboys. St. Louis Cardinals, Seattle Seahawks, New York Yankees. Every 
third grader is going to write a book. Every third grader is going to be a, a movie star. Every third grader has got great ambitions. So why do some make it and some don't make it? Those that don't make it react to what comes along in life. Those that do make it respond. You see, you have so many people out there that want to tell you what you can't do. There were six boys in my family. I was the youngest of six boys. My mama liked me better than any of them. No doubt about it. Nobody in the Parker family had ever been to college, let alone get a degree. Everybody would tell you, you can't go to college, you're a, you're a Parker. My oldest brother went to college and graduated. My next brother went to college. So what do you think happened when I came along? Instead of hearing the negative, no Parker can go to college, what do you think I heard? All I ever heard was, which college are you going to? Was it easier to be me than it was to be my oldest brother, Jesse? Oh, yes, 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 yes. He was told a thousand times, you folks have no money. Nobody's ever gone to college. You cannot go to college. He didn't listen. He responded. He went to college, got a degree, became ultra successful. So when I came along, I didn't have the negativity. I had this. Why did everybody come to America in the first place? See, one thing that people don't teach enough of, they don't teach this enough. In Europe, if you were born a peasant, you were relegated to that for your entire life. They come to America, and the only thing that prevents you from getting to the top is you. The only thing that stops you from being the best you can be is you react and you don't respond. Question number one, what is it that keeps you from jumping out of the jar? Have you hit the top of that jar so many times and now you've quit jumping? Who are those that prevent you from jumping out of that jar? So you need to surround yourself with responders. Other people that respond to the way it works. You can be anything you want to be in life if you spend every day responding. Write your goals. Respond every day to those goals. When something bad happens to you today, the first thought that ought to come to your mind is we're going to respond. I cannot tell you how many times I stood on sidelines and players Somebody would fumble the ball, and I would hear everybody on the sideline say, we got to respond. They didn't say, oh, man, what are you doing fumbling the ball? We've got to respond. And that's all they needed to say. And that's all you need to say to yourself. Respond. See you tomorrow.